Merci. Euh, je vais démarrer tant que on le trouve. Um, I'll speak in English because I mainly know the vocabulary in English. Um, sorry for the locals. Uh, my name is Liam Wyatt. I'm from Australia, but I recently spent um, a month at the British Museum as the Wikipedian in residence. That's it. Um, what this meant is com was completely undefined, uh, but the idea was to try and produce a project to bring Wikipedia in-house. Uh, on the basis that we have a lot more in common, the cultural sector and the Wikimedia community, than either would like to admit, generally speaking. Uh, Wikipedia needs the, because of the nature of Wikipedia's uh, editorial policies, we require the expertise and the research of the cultural institutions, of the conservators, just as much as the cultural institutions require the, access, the global access, the global reach, and translations and so forth, that, and contextualization that Wikipedia offers. You can find everything that I'm about to say at that website if you merely go to Wikipedia, English Wikipedia, and type into the search box WP colon glam slash BM, and that will bring up everything that I'm about to say. If you simply go to WP colon glam, that will show you a, uh, a one-page summary of advice to the cultural sector for how you as an individual in the community of, of GLAMS can become personally involved in Wikipedia in a way that is appropriate to both contexts. So the point of this project was to bring Wikipedia in-house and cultural institutions in a way that was mutually beneficial, that was a proactive relationship, not merely reacting to something that has gone wrong, and without changing or undermining the existing principles of either community. Obviously, if if a museum changed its copyright policy or Wikipedia changed its editorial policy, that might make things easier, but it was about finding what can we do together on the existing principles. I was there for five weeks. It was just me. I had a zero dollar or zero pound budget. We had six sub-projects. During the month that I was there, there were approximately 50 main page appearances on the English Wikipedia of objects from the British Museum. This represented a backlog of good quality content about British Museum content that we didn't have the time, we had to spread out to put it on the front page of Wikipedia because there was so much interest in working with the cultural institution, merely because the cultural institution said, please work with us. Because the British Museum provided an invitation to the Wikimedia community via me, that enabled the, the community of, of people in London and around the world focused on British Museum content. Uh, and now there are several other projects that, that rang up whilst I was at the British Museum saying, how did you get a Wikipedian? We want a Wikipedian. Jealousy is a wonderful motivator, so the Smithsonian is now, uh, now trying to have their own Wikipedian. We ran GlamWiki in Australia last year, and we also ran GlamWiki in London last week. And one of the recommendations that came from Glamwick in Australia was we need to find ways of building personal and long-term relationships between cultural institutions and Wikimedia. It's not merely about extracting images or, or merely about talking about photographs, uh, but about long-term relationships. And this is one way of doing that. And it's important we try and find ways that are relevant to each institution because each institution has different needs, different problems, different uh, possibilities. So I went around and said, please, can I volunteer for a museum? And the British Museum said yes. So I flew to the British Museum and, and volunteered there. We ran six projects. Backstage Pass was the first one. This was what Eric mentioned this morning, where the British Museum invited Wikipedians in-house and showed them stuff that is not normally on display. This provided the Wikipedians a sense of being special, of having access to, to things that are not normally seen, and there was a sense of reciprocity and a sense of personal relationships between the individual curators and the individual Wikipedians. There was no obligation in either direction to do anything in particular, but over lunch, and this was the important part, not the tour, but the lunch, we could talk and, and say, hey, I like that thing too. You like that thing? Fantastic. Let's work together. Uh, so it wasn't about me being the, the central node of failure, 
but trying to build any kind of relationship that might be interesting for different people. We then also had places where Wikipedians or curators could list their interests and then I would try and match them up. And this I think is the base, the fundamental uh, replicable possibility for every cultural institution, one-on-one -on -one collaborations, like a personal advertisement in the newspaper. Hello, I'm interested in uh, Kikladic art, or I'm interested in the uh, Lindo man. Fantastic, okay. Let's, let's try and find a, a curator relevant. Equally, uh, several curators said, hey, I'm the curator, I, uh, for example, Isabella Brandt. I'm the curator of prints and drawings, and here's a portrait of Isabella Brandt, Ruben's second wife. And it's not on display, but it's really interesting. Can you find me a Wikipedian who wants to write about this? And so we did. And so now it's on Wikipedia, and it's very high quality, and it might even become go out on display because now more people know about it. On the back is a drawing of his third wife, which makes it quite interesting as a portrait. Also, people were requesting photographs and crowdsourcing the photographing of the British Museum. Obviously, it would be much better if we could use the British Museum's own photographs, but they were not willing, at least at the moment, to share their own photographs, so that's fine. We took our own and used them in, in specific educational contexts in Wikipedia. We also ran the feature article prize. This was the British Museum said, OK, we will offer five £100 gift vouchers to the British Museum bookshop store for the first five people who write feature quality, this is the top quality in Wikipedia, that gets on the front page as the feature article of the day and therefore the most visible place in all of Wikipedia. Uh, the first five articles that are feature quality about British Museum things in any language. And so uh, they were respectively the Royal Gold Cup, which is a, a French object in fact, uh, the Tabula Rosetana, the Rosetta Stone in the Latin Wikipedia, which I think is quite cute. Uh, the Great Wave, uh, which is in the Spanish Wikipedia. Uh, Epifania of Michelangelo, a drawing in the Catalan Wikipedia, and also Benin Bronze in the Catalan Wikipedia. What was most interesting is the, the uh, two people, British people who wrote the article in Latin about the Rosetta Stone, went and then translated that article, which was feature quality in Latin, translated it into English, from Latin and it's now feature quality in English and has appeared on the front page of Wikipedia and represents possibly the culmination, the, the best thing that the British Museum could do on Wikipedia is have its most famous objects on the front page of Wikipedia. Uh, and that cost them effectively £100 gift voucher to their own bookshop. <laughs> we also ran the Hoxon Challenge. This is my personal favourite project and in my opinion is the best individual Wikipedia article in all of Wikipedia ever, but I'm biased. The, prom the premise, the challenge was how quickly can we create the best quality content use if we give access to the best quality resources. So this was a chest, a hoard of Roman gold and silver jewellery that was discovered about 10 years ago. That is in the British Museum. It's very famous, there's lots of references, there's lots of, uh, there's lots of popular knowledge of this thing. And all of the experts, all of the objects, all of the references were at the British Museum. So we said, okay, invite 10 Wikipedians on site, get the curators and the experts and all the books they wrote into a room, lock them in a room with Wi-Fi and coffee for a day and see what happens. Now, we didn't produce a feature article in one day, but we produced it in about two weeks, and it is extensively referenced. It is extraordinarily high quality, precisely because we had all of the relevant experts checking it, and it is now translated, and it is now a whole ecosystem of other articles about related content, such as uh, Roman spice trade to Britain in that period, which didn't exist at all. Uh, it represented a, a fantastic bring together of, of relevant interests around this one subject and is also quite replicable in any uh, other cultural institution that has content which is well uh, researched.
And finally we had the, the sixth project was school translation. This is a high school from Ardèche, uh, from uh, Annonay, on Ardèche. And they came on their school trip to London at the end of troisième for their, for their school trip. And what we did was find 15 or 20 Wikipedia articles in English that did not exist in French and asked them as part of their English class to translate the first two paragraphs of the English article into French and then give that back to Wikipedia so we can create those articles in the French Wikipedia. It's not the most efficient way of creating new content, but it meant that those students could then learn about collaborate, collaboration, collective editing, footnoting, translation into English, and then when they arrived at the British Museum, we gave them the list and they went around and tried to find the objects that they had just written about. So it was a good transfer of of information from learning about it online and then discovering it in real life. So there are the five projects. We uh, you can see in blue the number of page views of British Museum objects in English combined. It's brought down by two orders of magnitude. So the highest point there is actually one million, not, not 10,000. And the red is the number of click-throughs from Wikipedia to the British Museum. So you can see there's approximately 100 to 1 relationship between a page view on Wikipedia and a click through to the British Museum website. Uh, Wikipedia articles about British Museum content material in English is seen more than the British Museum's own website. And this, is, this will be true for the Louvre, for the Smithsonian, for every museum. Your content in Wikipedia is more visible in Wikipedia than your own website. This is the crystal skull, which is that spike, the, te the 10,000, the 1 million spike, because that was the day that the film Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Crystal Skull was released. <laughs> but you can also see a spike in the red, which means that people were clicking through to the British Museum to the British Museum having come from Google thinking about a pop culture film and ending up at the British Museum. So that's a good transfer of, of people. All of these projects are about improving content. They're all about focusing on personal relationships. They're not, a, they are not about my personal work as an editor. I could have written articles uh, and that would be a valid way of doing this kind of collaboration. But th this one was about me providing relationships between the two communities. Uh, none of this was about the British Museum releasing its own content, which would be nice, uh, but they don't have to, to make a relationship. And every institution can do something slightly different if it wants to. Like I said, this is about building proactive relationships of mutual benefit that do not require changing of principles on either, either side. And that's a different presentation. Thank you.